Good morning, Penny. I'm Chase Sachs, an owner operator of Blacksmith and the Bluegrass Blacksmith Shop. Today I'm going to do a uh, part three on uh, blacksmithing lessons. Today what we're going to cover is uh, tapering and bending. So it's got a piece of 3 8 uh, round bar hanging up the forge. Let's get down the anvil, show you how it's going to come out of the forge. Lay our anvil, we're going to hill hill in and then turn 90 degrees, hit again. Hit. Now I want to take it a little bit slower so you can see what I'm talking about. Just go back and forth. What that does is it reduces the uh, surface area of contact of the metal. Because when I hit on this side, and here, these ends here become, the sides become bulged out. So when you turn the metal, only the bulge tip of the metal is touching the handle. So what that means is that, uh, you know, sand is pretty cold. Um, even in the summertime, you know, if it's room temperature, it's still cold compared to this metal. Uh, so it's going to just take the heat right out of it. So the less uh, surface area contact you have with the metal in the forge, or metal in the anvil, uh, the longer your metal will stay hot and the more you can get done. So I'm going to put this back in the forge, heat it up again, we're going to finish out that tape. Alright, I'm going to forge, I'm going to do it pretty fast, just go ahead and get it done. Kind of clean it up. Uh, you'll have areas that'll be uh, uh, skinnier than others, and you just want to kind of blend that in. So get the bulk of your tapering done, and then go back and clean it up. Also, always before you put your metal back in the uh, forge, you want to make sure that your metal is straight. That way, when you come out of the forge for the next heat, you don't have to go back and uh, you know fix it. And then by the time it's fixed or cleaned up, you've lost your heat. And when it gets this dull red color, you just want to go ahead and stop. Uh, that'll just put stress in the metal, and uh, it just won't clean up near as good. So go ahead and put it back in the fire. Heat it up again. Also, when you're heating up a piece that you've tapered, make sure to keep an eye on it because the tip of the metal here is going to heat up a lot faster than the rest of it. So you want to make sure that you get an even heat. The way you do this is by putting the skinniest part, the smallest part of the uh, metal a little bit past the main part of your fire to where it gets hot, to where the hottest part of the forge is on the fatter part of the metal. You want to keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't burn up in the process of heating. Okay, so you can see we've tapered it down to a pretty good point. Now what we want to do is make this uh, taper square. We want to make it round. Now I've already started on the back part here. And the way you uh, make it square round again is set the, uh, your square ends on their corners. And hit the corners down. Do this on all sides. Then once you do that, just start going around. This part you can do when it's pretty cool or cold. Um, so, this hit turn, once you, uh, once you make it into an octagon by hitting the corners, just hit and turn. Just turn it and hit it. Alright, that's... Got it nice and round. Now what we're going to do is make what's called a rat tail or a finial scroll. And what that is, is just a really tight scroll like you see on the ends of uh, handles or uh, hooks. Keeps you from uh, getting stuck in the hand by that point on uh, whatever application you're using it for. So we're just going to heat it up. It's not going to take much, this little tip. So we're going to make sure we don't burn our tip off when we put it in. Now there's two ways of doing a finial scroll or a rat tail. You can use a pair of pliers and just curl it over like, like so. 
That's one way to do it. Or you can use your hammer. The way you do this, set the edge, your tip over the anvil, and just tip, and as you're uh, hitting it, feed it over the anvil, then hit it back. And then hit and rotate it up to get a nice symmetrical uh, taper. So that is called a finial or a rat's tail scroll. Uh, you can call it, you know, just your average Joe. Call it a rat tail scroll, but rat tail doesn't sound too good when you're showing somebody a uh, thousand dollar gate that has that type of scroll fast. Oh, what kind of, what do you call that? Wouldn't sound too good calling it a rat tail. So next what we're going to do is we're going to cover bending. We're going to tap over the anvil, over the anvil horn. So we're going to take another heat, make sure we don't burn our tip up in the uh, forest. So we're going to kind of feed that on through. Then we'll go to the horn and do our bending. All right, going over the horn, we're just going to hit, and as we're hitting it, we're going to feed it over. Now what I'm going to show you too, this type of bend that we're going to do here is uh, what I use for fireplace handles. But this is just basically covering how you can bend the metal over. Just feed it over the anvil, horn, pull it back to the end, sit it on the face of the anvil. of a fireplace handle or you know whatever you know fireplace tool handle anything you want to use it for but that just basically covers the uh, aspect of how to bend the metal over the horn to the end. Now, as for coating your metal with protective coating, I prefer to use beeswax, which is the traditional method. This is a just a block of beeswax. You can buy this on Amazon.com. Um, and I like to wait for uh, the metal to turn after it turns that dull red, turn to a black, uh, and just rub it on. If the beeswax catches fire, which it will, um, if it's too hot like that. Do that. If it does that, it generally means that uh, your metal is a little too warm. So that area, I'm not going to coat. All right, and make sure when you're putting this hot beeswax on that these droplets that fall, see how it's falling? You don't want that on your skin. Take my word for it, it hurts. It hurts very bad, so make sure that you don't uh, let that hot beeswax get on you. It's very painful. Now we're just going to hang this out to dry. Let it cool down. You do not want to quench it after coating beeswax. It will leave a white waxy finish on your ironwork. Well that's the conclusion of this video. If you like this video please like and comment. Also subscribe to my channel. You can also look us up on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash blacksmith of the bluegrass. On there you'll see updates on new videos and also blacksmithing tools that I have for sale that I've either made or, or old uh, tools that I've restored. So thanks for watching. God bless. May your forge stay high.